Do you want to build web apps in minutes? Let's discover Streamlit, a free open source framework to create apps from data using Python. It takes a few lines of code to build apps with Streamlit API, all widgets are made to easily interact with the others and your data, plus it comes with hundreds of custom components you can use or start from to create your own. To start using Streamlit, you can use their free community cloud version for public apps or to make them private, self-deploy it by following their docker guide in their documentation. Or you can use a platform like ours, Elestio, to deploy it seamlessly on your server or the cloud provider of your choice. We handle the installation, backups, updates and ongoing maintenance for you. To start using Streamlit on our platform, head to ls.io and click on login. Then deploy my first service, search for Streamlit and hit select. You have the choice between different cloud providers, regions and service plans based on your needs. Choose the one you want and then click on next. From there you can adjust more advanced settings, choose between different level of support. I will keep the first level that is free and included by default and then create service. Before the installation is finished, we can have a look at the playground on the official website of Streamlit. It's the best way to learn the basic through practical examples. First, we have this hello here. On the left, you have the code of how to write Python using Streamlit API. And on the right, you have the preview, what it generates. You can see you have st.title, which generate this title, then some markdown text, we generate the text respecting the markdown for the bold, the rainbow, I didn't even know it exists, and button, which is send balloons, and then it will trigger a balloons function. Let's try to see what it does. And it display lovely balloons floating in the air. That's a nice simple example. Then you have charts. It uses other libraries, first Streamlit, and it works in combination with pandas and numpy. What do we have? We have some text on top, which is this section, then an array to declare some users containing a multi-select and toggle. So here is the multi-select. We can remove a user and automatically it will disappear from the chart. If I try to bring it back, it comes nicely. You have the three lines in the graph, graph that is generated with pandas library. You have two tabs here, chart and data frame, allowing you to search data, to download it, to expand it. All of this with only a few lines of code. Let's check the other examples, data frames. The same principle applies, it's using the same library, but different line of code to generate different components. You have this input, choosing the number of rows you will have here below. And what is incredible is you have a whole working web application from data working with only that few lines of code. If you need to do it using React or any framework and library, it would take you a huge amount of time compared to here, having a quick prototype ready in minutes. You can go further, you have LLM chat to chat with your data. Again, a few lines of code. You have your chat interface ready and let's say hello. And the answer is super rapid. You can also process images using OpenCV library. Here, the process they are running on the image is to detect the edges. You have this original picture, or you can upload one, and it will process it easily, or even create custom map with geospatial data. So here, they add a layer of information on top of the map. The first question you might have is how do I guess the code to write? What are the Streamlit functions and how it works? Browsing the examples is a good start, but the documentation is where you have to go to discover all the components available from the Streamlit API. Here you have text elements, you can write markdown title, you can use badges, create dividers, add data elements, ready to use components that already handle the logic so you don't have to do it yourself. And of course, once you decide to use it seriously, read the fundamentals of the 
documentation to discover features that I won't cover in this video. But the true strength of Streamlit is not the basic component that they provide, which is a good starting point, but they also provide components. What they are is they are third-party modules that extend what's possible with Streamlit. What it means is you can create your own components or use existing ones like the one listed here, respecting Streamlit guidelines that make them super easy to integrate into your projects, your web apps built with Streamlit. You have LLM components, many UI components, like UI widgets, image processing with image and video, drawable canvas, image comparison, cropper. In a classical development, you would search for them as NPM packages, but then you would have to code different things to embed them into your project. Here, the process is very simplified by using Streamlit. To understand how they work and how to create yours, you can read the documentation. Or as they are open source, you can click on one, it will open their GitHub repository because they have to be public. So if there is one you like but you need to customize, you go to the repository, you fork it, and do the changes on your component. All right, let's go to our instance. Once the installation is ready, you will receive this email. Follow the click here to get the password. Then copy the password into your clipboard. Follow the link. Type root and paste your password. That redirects you to your deployed app built with Trimlet. Automatically, when you will build changes, it will be reflected on your instance. To do the different changes to your code, you can go to Tools and open VS Code. Then copy the password and open the link. Paste the password. Submit. We arrive in Visual Studio Code, but directly inside our instance, inside our app. In the mail that we received during the installation, we have guidelines on how to achieve it. We can update requirements.txt to edit the libraries and streamlit underscore app.py for the application code. Okay, let's try to do a simple change. We open app, streamlit app.py. First, we can see that we have Altair, Pandas, and Streamlit installed. So on a new line, you would add other libraries. And then we have the startup code. We can say LSTO, welcome to Streamlit, my first app. And to apply the changes, we need to run this comment. Okay, let's open a new terminal. Here it is. We paste the comment and we run it. Once it's finished, we can simply reload our app and see our changes. If you are looking for some inspiration, you can open the gallery and discover tons of apps made with Streamlit. Let's open Pretty Map. It allows you to customize the map render here. So we can choose a smaller radius, a different address, change the style, can expand things, Adjust the colors, but I don't want to make it look ugly. Choose if you want a rectangle or a circle. Then you press generate here, submit, and your map is now generated. Notice before it was a circle, now it is a square, and we have the blue that we defined here for your band zero. Working great. And if there is an app that you like and you'd like to build something similar, you can click on fork. It will redirect you to Streamlit Community Cloud. So if you prefer for the self-hosted version, follow the GitHub link and simply copy the code and use it for your project. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering Streamlit with us. Please hit the like button to help our channel be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next platform overviews. If you want to continue your open source journey, watch this video available here.